Let me ask you something. How many times this week have you said, I'll start tomorrow? And when tomorrow arrived, the task was still sitting there, untouched. You blamed yourself, you thought, I'm lazy, I lack discipline. But here's what many don't realize. Procrastination isn't laziness. It's not weakness. It's a dopamine timing glitch. Your brain's internal stopwatch is firing the reward signal too late. And today, I'll show you exactly how to reset that clock. So motivation arrives at the start line, not the finish. Stay with me, because by the end of this video, you'll see why willpower isn't the answer. What's actually happening inside your brain? And three science-backed ways to move your dopamine spark forward. You'll walk away with tools that can change how you start anything. I'm Dr. Silvio Reggae, consultant, psychiatrist, and educator. For over a decade, I've trained thousands of doctors and health professionals on how the brain, mind, and body work together. And on this channel, I translate that science into practical tools you can actually use. So when I say procrastination isn't laziness, I'm not just sharing an opinion. This comes straight from neuroscience and from years of working with patients and training clinicians. Most people think procrastination equals poor discipline. The reality, procrastination is a reward timing error. The dopamine surge, the burst that should push you into action, shows up after the work is done, not before as it should. So here's the plan for this video. First, I'll break down the brain's internal reward stopwatch. Two, I'll show you how delay discounting makes long tasks feel impossible. And third, I'll walk you through three ways to reset the dopamine clock so your brain actually wants to start. And this isn't just theory. Brain scans from studies show that chronic procrastinators really do get their dopamine burst late, even when compared to people with ADHD or depression. The circuits are there, they're just mistimed. So let's open up the brain's stopwatch. Imagine hitting start on a stopwatch when you sit down to work, but the bell doesn't ring until you've already finished the task. That's procrastination. Your brain runs on two types of dopamine releases. One, phasic dopamine, short bursts that say go now. And two, tonic dopamine, the steady background hum that sets readiness. In procrastination, tonic levels are usually fine, but the phasic burst the one that gets you started arrives too late. Normally, the brain learns to shift dopamine forward. At first, the spike happens when you finish a task. Later, the brain gets smarter. The dopamine burst starts to appear at the cue, like opening your laptop or picking up a pen. That's what drives you to act. But in procrastination and in ADHD, that dopamine transfer is broken. The dopamine burst waits until the reward is in your hands. No spark at the cue. No push at the start. It's not laziness, it's late wiring. So let me make this clearer with an example. Let's use the fridge analogy. At first, you only get dopamine when you eat a snack. But over time, your brain shifts the burst earlier. Just opening the fridge or smelling the food gives you that nudge to eat. In procrastination, that early shift never happens. The dopamine only fires when you've already eaten. No spark before, no motivation to begin. But there's another twist. It's not just about timing, it's also about how your brain values rewards across time. So this is where we encounter the phenomenon of delay discounting. You see, your brain doesn't treat all rewards equally. The further away the payoff, the less your brain cares. This is called delay discounting. A reward that comes in three hours feels weak compared to one that arrives in three minutes. Now, add the dopamine lag. Even short tasks can feel pointless. So here's how to fight back. Fix one, break it down. Turn a three hour report into 25 minute chunks. Each chunk gives your brain a quicker payoff. Quicker payoff is equal to stronger dopamine is equal to less procrastination. Let's connect this to an example, the gym analogy. Think of exercise. Telling yourself I'll do a 90 minute workout feels impossible, but saying I'll just warm up for 10 minutes, that feels doable. And often once you start, you keep going. Chunking work does the same thing. It makes the brain stop discounting the reward. Fix two, reward the cue. 
Pair the first step with something enjoyable. Opening a laptop, play a favorite track. Picking up a textbook, sip a coffee. You're teaching your brain to link dopamine to the start, not the end. These tricks rely on one principle. Your brain must believe the reward is closer than expected. And that's where prediction errors come in. So what are prediction errors? You see, your brain loves surprises. When a reward shows up earlier than predicted, dopamine surges. We can use this to pull motivation forward. And one of the really powerful ways of doing this is sensory rehearsal. Picture yourself starting the task, not finishing it. Feel your fingers pressing the keys, hear the mouse click, see the first line appear on screen. This compresses the future reward into the present. So if you're stuck, consider the two minute start. The ignition switch is committing to just two minutes. Write one sentence, open one file, start one slide, and then anchor the start with sensory cues. This primes the brain's salience network. This is a circuit that tells your brain, pay attention, this matters. What's important here though, is don't over-visualize the end reward, like applause, praise, or the finished product. That can trick your brain into feeling satisfied before you begin. So what we've looked at is how do we rewire the brain to focus on motivation as a timing glitch and change it. But for many, procrastination is also tied to emotions, especially anxiety. And that's where the circuits get deeper. You see, procrastination isn't just about dopamine. It's about the emotional circuits wrapped around it. High anxiety keeps the brain scanning for threats. And when your brain is in scanning mode, it delays switching into goal mode. So here are three resets straight from neuroscience. First, the light and movement reset. Just five minutes of brisk walking in daylight increases dopamine in the brain's motivation circuits. Think of it as charging your battery before you sit down. Two, protect sleep signals. Late evening, dim screens. Blue light blocks melatonin, which messes with your dopamine sensitivity the next morning. If you've ever wondered why you feel flat after late night scrolling, that's why. And third, for professionals, for clinicians, in certain cases, medications like low-dose bupropion or r can help tighten reward timing. Of course, in conditions like ADHD, stimulants may do the same. But the foundation must always be behavioral anchors. Otherwise, the effect doesn't stick. Let me give you another analogy here, the coffee ritual. Think about coffee. The drink itself gives you caffeine, but the ritual, the smell, warmth, routine, primes your brain before the first sip. The same principle applies to starting tasks. A pre-task ritual tells your brain the reward is coming. And once you understand this, it's time to reframe procrastination altogether. So here's the reframe. Procrastination is not a moral failing. It's not laziness. It's a misaligned brain clock. And clocks can be reset with smaller chunks, cue rewards, daylight resets, and sensory starts. When you reframe procrastination as a late signal problem, we stop attacking ourselves and we start fixing the system. So the next time you hear that inner critic say lazy, you can answer with this. I'm not lazy. My dopamine clock is late and I'm moving the start time forward. If you're a clinician and want to go deeper into topics like ADHD motivation and reward prediction errors, I've built full modules inside the Academy by PsychScene. That's the educational platform I run, designed for psychiatrists, GPs, and mental health professionals. It's where I combine clinical practice with evidence-based teaching, so you can sharpen your skills and bring the science straight into your work. And for everyone else, start small today. Try the two-minute start and share what shifted your dopamine clock. I'm Dr. Reggae, and thank you for watching. Remember, small shifts in your brain's timing can reset a lifetime of delay. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, stay curious. Bye-bye.